morning. Oh my gosh, what a difference from yesterday. Yesterday I joined here and I was a hot mess. I was like that, um, like that hamster. Remember the one that I showed you that was like all stressed out? I was absolutely 100% in a hamster kind of mood yesterday. And today I, I woke up completely different. I just woke up and I was like, bam, let's just do life. And that's what we're gonna do today. <gasps> Courtney, let's give it up for Courtney. <laughs> and by the way, Courtney, I did not know that you had the most adorable freckles. I saw a TikTok that you did and it, it was like the first time that I like ever saw, hello, Tulip. Um, we have Tulip, we have Courtney, we have Valerie, we have Polly, we have Linda. We have amazing people. But Courtney, you have really cute little freckles. And I was like, I want to have freckles like that. So I'll have to get a tattoo to get freckles like that. But anywho, it just, I woke up in a completely different sort of energy. And so first off, I want to apologize for being a wet noodle yesterday. Yesterday was absolutely 100% just like, Wah, 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 wah. And do you like that? It's like, ooh. Um, hello, D Shepherd. Hello again, Linda. So I was a wet noodle yesterday. But here's the thing, and I try to be super um <laughs> Courtney says, um, I didn't sleep a wink. I watched your goofy outtake video and it was so cute. Thank you so much. Hello, Linda. Good morning. So yesterday I felt really bad. I felt, I, I don't know. I, I expect a certain amount out of, I expect a certain amount of energy out of myself. I expect for, to come on here and just be like, um, wow, you know what? This is like, I just expect to, to give you my energy and, but sometimes I just, I'm running low, you know, and it's just the reality of life. And here's the thing. It's like on those days I could just be like, you know, I'm just not going to do it or, or this or that. And I was like, no, you know what? That's just a part of life. We have good days. We have bad days. We have high energy days and then we have low energy days and so a lot of times when people will be like well how was your day and a lot of times I'll just say it was a day because what I don't like to do is I don't like to give a day um hold on let me check something here I don't like to give oh, okay I thought I was a little blurry there do I look okay <laughs> but I don't like to give my days, um, I don't like to rate my days on a level of happiness, all right? Because then I find like, if I tell myself that, oh, it was a bad day, then I'm like, it was a bad day. Or if I'm like, oh, today was a good day, but tomorrow isn't the same, then that makes tomorrow a bad day. So I like to just try to, I, I, I just try to stay even, I guess I could say. Tulip says, I didn't feel that way about yesterday. I really enjoyed yesterday so much, so I, I am back today. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Good. I'm glad that I look okay, too. So I have to, I have to confess. I have been going um, live on Amazon for like 30, 45 minutes before I come over here. And I am such a complete hot mess on that app. It is like, cause it's new and I have zero people watching me. It, like maybe there'll be like one person. And so I'll just be like rambling on. At, and I was like doing my live show. I forgot to tag things. So they had no idea what I was talking about. My microphone was sitting on the counter and I'm just like, that's just what we do. So it, it just was kind of like, um, I don't know. It was just kind of, I, I just wanted to let you know, because as I was sitting there and I was suffering through my Amazon live, I'm like, I can't wait to get back to YouTube because <laughs> they, I, I have to get back to friendly, um, a friendly territory. Hello, Kelly. So um, yeah, but that's what I've been doing. And you know, it's, and again, and I really do, Tulip, I appreciate your saying that I wasn't a wet noodle yesterday, but I do really, really, um, 
my energy is like, I don't know, it's kind of important. And I was really a little bummed at myself that I woke up in a kind of an off mood because I had to go film. I had to film that, um, that thing for Doc Martens. And I got off this live. I had no idea what I was going to end up wearing, but I ended up wearing the high roller jumper that I showed you yesterday. Um, and I didn't do, um, oh, I was looking for that Okay, I'll send it to you. I can, um, Courtney, I'll actually text you the link. Um, so I wore a necklace. Hello, hello. So I wore a necklace and I wore this one. And okay, you cheered me up. See, I am glad. All right, so, and that's just the funny thing. It's like in my mind, I was sitting there and, and here's the thing about mental health. Mental health and our self-talk to ourselves. Because yesterday after the live, I gave myself a firm talking to. I was like, that's not the way you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to be this and you're supposed to be that. I'm, I have an extremely critical self voice. I absolutely, um, I can find it, I'm sure, but I want you to get credit for it. Okay, I'll send you the link. It's super easy peasy. So I'll text you the link when we're done. But I have an extremely critical self voice. It's one of the things that led me to, a, to an addictive state. And so to me, it's like really easy for me to fall back into that pattern. So yesterday after I was done, I picked out my outfit and instantly I started feeling better. But for me, I cannot leave it just right there. I have to figure out with myself, why am I doing this to me? You know, I am my biggest critic, but why? And I figured it out. And what it was is because I've been telling you I've been out there and I've been doing some filming because um, I'm doing a Doc Martin campaign. But I felt like yesterday I was trying to be somebody who I wasn't. Not on the live. I was completely trans. I, I was myself on the live. But where I was falling and where I was stumbling, um, I do too, but I'm working on it. Okay, so here, here's the thing is that... For me, with my critical self thinking, I have to, I have to in my mind figure out what triggers it because I've got a pretty good grasp on it, but I'm always trying to find my triggers. And what I figured out what it was is that when I was trying to get ready to go out and do my filming, I had fallen back into that sort of mindset of I needed to look a certain way or I needed to represent myself in a certain way that was not authentic to myself. So I was trying to pick out outfits that weren't representing me. And it was throwing, as I spit all over myself, it was throwing me off. So it wasn't until I found an outfit that was absolutely 100% me, and I knew I could go out there and film it as me, that I didn't start find figuring out where that negativity was coming from so as soon as I figured it out as soon as I put on my my little outfit and I'm like yeah there she is it instantly started getting better but it was just really weird how just I guess it's because I have been being truly off I guess it's the more I embrace myself and who I am the when I feel like I'm trying to shove myself back into a box I am fighting that feeling. So I can look at it two different ways. I can be like, wow, yeah, no, I'm still struggling with a, you know, with a critical um, self voice. Or I can be like, how cool is that? I am so enjoying my freedom of being myself and not listening to that critical self voice that as soon as it starts to happen, I'm like, mm, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like that feeling. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. So I, um, to me, it was really kind of like, ah, there, that's why it is. So as you can tell, I'm all ready to go today. I have one more thing I have to do, and then I'm going to get back to my regular schedule, but I have to go out and take pictures. And I don't photograph well, period, end of story. There, I, I do this. <laughs> I'll be sitting there, and in my mind, have you seen that TikTok filter where it's like, 
in my mind, I look this way, but in reality, I look a different way. In my mind, I am like this supermodel and I've got like my hair blowing in the wind, even though I don't have any hair, but I have that and I'll just be like, oh, this is a good pose. And then I'd look at my picture and I'm like, um, <laughs> I'm like, why? Why did you do that, Lonnie? And I'm like, I don't know why I did that. So Tulip says, you've inspired me a lot that uh, in that respect, staying true to my authentic self. Awesome. And you have to do it. And that is where your happiness lies. All right. Your happiness lies in your, in your authenticity of yourself. When we try to be somebody else, when we try to be a different form or a different fashion of ourselves, we are not as happy because it's not us. Um, Okay, Kelly says, be right back, switching to tablet, just walking in door. Cool, okay, come right back. Courtney says, you really should do a life coach talk for women under 25, um, who you are, you are who we wanted to be. Aw, you know what, truthfully, I am so excited about just seeing where this platform goes. I, I, I think this live, this live is going to, I think translate into something really amazing and it's just giving it time to let it develop because here's the thing it's it's like life as long as I am here talking to you life is going to constantly be developing and we are never going to run out of anything to talk we're not going to run out of things to talk about because that is just it life happens Tiggy's here hello Tiggy because that's what happens. Life happens. And I think that the more that we're honest with it and the more that we embrace it, the better off we are. Because I got to tell you, life just isn't all that easy these days. There's a lot of things going on in the world that can absolutely stumble on us. And here's the thing. Here's how I look at it. I mean, yes, things are going on in the world. And, and I don't want to be one of those naysayers that are like, oh, it's never been this bad. Because I can remember as a kid listening to my mom and my grandma there, and they were like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. And I'd be like, oh, well, I'm, that kind of sucks because I just started my life, and you're saying this is the worst it's ever been. So every generation, everybody has gone through these things where it's not a fun things happening in the world. Um, Courtney says, let me tell y'all, life is fleeting. Yes, sweetheart, it is. And I 100%... you. You give me so much energy. I hope you know that. So the world around us can get heavy. And the way I look at it is, it's like, it's like walking through a field. Have you ever walked through a field during springtime and there's all this pollen is like flying through the air and you walk and it's like sticking to you? just little pieces stick to you. Sometimes I think that that's what negativity is. And sometimes I think that that's what negative self-talk is. And that sometimes I think we get burdened down by it. And we need a place like this to where we can sit there and just shake it off and be like, yeah, you know what? Let's look at it a different way. Let's look at life in a different perspective. Let's stop trying to listen to all the outside sources and start listening to our inside sources. Sometimes inside sources can be just as mean, if not meaner than the outside, but we have more control over our inside voices because at the end of the day, we control what we think about each, what we think about ourselves. We're the ones saying it. And a lot, you know, I hear all the time, like, well, um, uh, Tulip says, older women really need the support. It's not easy to find women who celebrate older women and make it fun and positive. Yeah, we'll talk about that. But um, gosh, I totally lost my train of thought. Oh, so anyway, so we um, we need to shake off. Oh, our self-talk. That's what we're talking about. And whenever that happens, if I just keep talking, it will pop up in the back of my mind. But we are in control of what we tell ourselves. And we have to tell ourselves kind things. I posted a short on here the other day. And um, the response was, you have good legs. Um, I wish I could wear shorts. You have good legs. I have bird legs. And I'm telling you right now, I don't care if you are joking. I don't care if you are just being like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. What 
whatever negative things you tell yourself on a daily basis about you as a person, as a body type, as a whatever, you need to stop right now. You can always put like the haha behind it, but it's still negative self-talk, all right? We can be like, well, I don't want my arms to show because of my flabby arms. Well, you know what? Those are still the arms that carried your children when you were younger. Those are still the arms that you're going to be hugging your grandchildren with. Do you think that they give a rat's behind if there's extra skin on your arms? They don't. They just want to hug. They just want to be loved. And it's us. It's us in our little heads that that is like, our arms are not good enough. And I'm like, that's baloney. And you know what? When I get into rants, I have to remember that I cannot use the colorful language that I so wish I could use. Um, let's see here. Tiggy says, remember when we were young and we used to make sure we were totally put together, makeup, dressed, et cetera, in case we saw some crush? I had been doing the I am rushing the the world attitude. Yeah. And you know what? And that's just the thing. It's, it's like some people don't get out of that kind of mindset. I mean, there are, there are people out there still today that are like, I can't leave the house unless everything is perfect. And what a sad sort of cage to live in. So getting back to like negative self-talk, even if you're joking, don't joke. Tell yourself beautiful things about yourself, not negative things. I told myself my nose was too big to have a nose ring until I was 58 years old. And I love my nose ring. And yes, I know that my nose takes up a good portion of my face, but it's my nose. It's my dad's nose. It makes, I can smell Brandon's um, breakfast that he's making. I can smell the beautiful flowers. That's what's important, not the size of it and not, you know, what society's standards of what it should be. Um, let's see here. Uh, Tiggy Tulip says, I do remember that. Uh, Tiggy says, oh, my son put his hand on my mother's face and told her she was wrinkly. She never forgot that. You know, that's what happened. Um, I am my own worst critic. Absolutely. And then D Shepard said me too. Yeah. You know what? We are trained so Tulip says, I see nothing wrong from your, with your nose. See, that's just the whole thing. It's like the outside world never stopped and was like, oh, wow, she's got a, um, she's got a really big nose. It was what I was telling myself. And Linda says in Japan, they celebrate imperfection. Yes. You know what? I think America, um, the U S I think, uh, and maybe different parts of the world, we are super critical. And there is definitely that that whole like perfection kind of thing going on that we don't have, we don't have to jump on the train. All right. We don't have to, we don't have to be like, excuse me, can you, can you slow that bus down so I can jump on there? We don't have to, to do this perfection thing. We choose to do this perfection shame, perfection thing. D Shepard says, I also have my dad's nose. Yeah. My dad and my sister had even a larger version of this nose, but my mom had that cute little nose. So I, I kind of got somewhere in between, but it's the whole idea of our self talk and we just got to stop that. And I think a lot of it is from the simple fact that we try to be perfect and again, not living our true authentic self. See, here's the thing. If you, because I always say this, and you know, the beautiful thing about today's episode is I had some things that we were going to talk about. And if we get to them, we get to them. And if we have an organic conversation, then that's just the way it's going to be. But what I was going to say is, wow, man, I am just losing my train of thoughts left and right. Tulip says, yeah, I need to be nicer to myself. That's what I was going to say. Here's the thing. If we absolutely, if we, hello, Sandy. Um, she said, I used to hate my nose until I realized it was my grandpa's nose. Now I love it. See, it's about loving ourselves for whatever form of fashion and version of us that we are. Um, D Shepard says, I did end up getting it pierced last week. Really? That's awesome. You know what? Like I said, I got mine done um, last year and my birthday's coming around. And I was like, 
what should I do for my birthday? And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to strap on my hiking boots and I'm going to go for a hike. And I, um, I actually did that this weekend. I went for a hike and I did not realize how out of shape I am. I do go to the gym. I do lift weights. I just don't do much cardio. And it kicked this, this girl's behind. So what I was, what I wanted to say, and really where I want this to go is that, like I said earlier, if we live our authentic self, if we love ourselves for who we are, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, then our critical self-talk, what are they going to say? You know, the only thing that happens is that when we look at ourselves and we try to be somebody else, that critical self-talk jumps in on that. All right. That's when it's like, yeah, no, you, you shouldn't be yourself. You should be somebody else. You should do this. And it just gives it fuel for the fire. But if you're like, you know what? I like my nose. I like my hair. I'm okay being 58. Then what's the negative self-talk going to say? You know, is it going to be like, yeah, you know, or, you know, my dad's meaner than your dad. I mean, what's it going to say? Polly says, I brushed off most of my negative thoughts once I started getting tattooed nine years ago. And that's the thing. It's, it's like, I was, I've been thinking about it because I've got some things going on. I can't talk about a whole, I just don't know what I can talk about and what I can't talk about, but I got some exciting things coming up. But one of them has to do with recovery and body art. And I was, I thought about it and I, I tried to see if the two and two, how combined they were. And while I don't, I mean, I wasn't sober when I started getting tattooed. I got a whole lot of tattoos when I wasn't sober. I got sober and I got even more tattoos. So for me, my tattoos are like the version of me again, of me on the life, on the inside. And I never in a million years thought that I would end up with this many tattoos. I never envisioned this version of me when I was younger because I didn't know who I was. And so I think it's once I, I started embracing who I was on the inside and letting it out that it became extremely colorful. And now this is what I look like on the inside is on my outside. Oh my gosh. It's like so many different layers of the onion, but it is true. And, but that doesn't necessarily mean you need to go out and get tattoos in order to find yourself because unlike untattooed people who tell me I have too many tattoos, I don't think tattoos are for everybody. I don't think it is meant for everybody because we are not all the same person. So what works for one person might not work for another. And I think it's once we start embracing that individuality that we can actually just be a little bit more comfortable with ourselves. Because again, I don't understand why we all think that we have to like do things together. And here, I've never been one for group sports. I've never been one, I like to do things on my own. And I've never been one where you go and, and, you know, like five different people are giving five different opinions and everybody's fighting for like, who's right. I've never been into that. I'm more like, y'all just do your thing. I'm going to do my own thing. And I think that that's what our, our, our confidence and our inner style should be all about. You know, we need to stop listening to them bickering over there. And we need to start listening to ourselves and embracing that. That is what we need to do. Yes. Gosh, what a cool, you see, I love it. Um, I love it when our, when our little morning show takes an organic flair. I, it, 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 to me, this is what I envisioned and I'm super excited about it. Tulip says, I'm curious about the recovery and tattoos things. Yes. Um, it is. It is just basically it's the ideology that a lot of times people get body art during their recovery. And it's going to be something that I'm going to have to do some some heavy thinking on and some like trying to fig- correlate the two. And I definitely think that it goes hand in hand. And the reason being 
is um, we almost feel like we're taking control back. All right. When you're an addict, when you have an addiction, you have no control. Your addiction is driving the Mack truck and you're in the passenger seat and you're like, you know, um, um, I, I, I have no control because you don't feel like you have control because everything is based around your addiction. And then once you start getting sober, you're like, oh, wow, I'm in control of this. I'm driving the truck now. And we have a tendency to get tattoos because we represent the freedom of making our own decision. Um, let's see. Linda says, uh, okay, Courtney says, me too. Less structure is better. Oh, yeah. Linda says, I'm like that. Everyone should um, do what makes them happy. I agree. Tulip says, I agree. I know many people that have done that. Courtney says, I get a tattoo every time I get a surgery. That's my taking back control. So are you getting a new tattoo? Because you just had surgery. Um, and I'll text you on that one. And Tulip says, um, that is so true. Tulip, oops, that is so true. I figured it out. And it's, but that's what it is. And here's the thing. It's like, I got my first tattoo when I was, um, the first time I left my ex-husband. Because I had no control. I was in a narcissistic relationship with a very mean man. And that was my grasping at, this is my body. This is my life. I can do what I want. And that's how I started my tattoo journey. And it has since developed into, you know, like healing. Um, I get one every time I have a loss in my life, I get a tattoo. Sometimes I get one just because I think it's cool and I wanted to add to my sleep, but it is, it is definitely, um, it is definitely something and um, I'm getting a headstone with a laugh out loud by, really, are you? Julie says, good idea, Courtney. I'm having surgery on the 24th. Maybe I'll get a new tattoo. Yeah, Julie, well, you, did you, I mean, so Julie, I know that you were thinking about that tattoo idea. Did you ever get a tattoo or anything like that? Because I think that you need to get a, okay, Julie, I think you need to get a tattoo, but you need to get one regaining, regaining your strength in your life. That's what I'm going to say on that one. So now, um, yes, Julie needs to do that. So uh, tattoos are a way, a form and a fashion of feeling like we're taking our control back. A lot of times women are very notorious for going in and chopping off all their hair after a breakup because they want to feel something, which leads me to a different subject. Okay, think of, riddle me this, Batman. Women have a tendency to make drastic changes to their hair when they have a breakup they have a tendency to go super short are we being controlled over our hair do we wear our hair a certain way thinking that that's what a partner is going to like or are we i mean what is it it's the same correlation hair is super easy to change but do we get held back by thinking we're supposed to look a certain way with our hair. Hmm. Think about that one. Julie says, any idea on a tattoo about regaining, regain, regaining strength? Absolutely. Here's the thing. It's like, I want, hello, Sandy. Again, you're already here. Why did I say hello again? So here's what I want you to do, Julie, because I think that's a great idea, but I want you to Think about what represents strength for you. For me personally, it's things like um, a tree. A tree seems really strong. Um, or an animal, like a certain animal, like um, a beautiful bird or something like that. But whatever in your mind gives you that ideology of strength, it could be a bear. It can be a bird. Like I said, a tree. It could be a flower. It could be anything you want that in your mind represents strength and that's a form or a fashion of the tattoo that you would that you would get i mean you could you could um yeah trees and that's just the thing it's it's like trees have roots and my tree of life right here the roots go into a heart so the roots are actually shaped like a heart because i have this tree growing from love and so you could do something like that. Now, you can get even more um, like 
deeper into that conversation because a lot of times people think that knowledge is strength. So you could tattoo your favorite book or like um, a, str- you know, anything, whatever you, whatever evokes that thought of strength in your mind when you see that vision, that's your tattoo idea. And I always do recommend like looking on Pinterest or something like that and just look at different ideas and it will lead to one thing to the other until finally, and it's not so much the exact tattoo, but it's the image. When you find that image, you're like, oh, wow, yeah, no, that makes me think of strength. Then you know you found the right thing. Um, Let's see here. Courtney says, nature, Julie, anything nature. It doesn't have to be mean anything, whatever. It it doesn't have to mean anything really, whatever it means to you. Exactly. Whatever your representation is. Polly says, I have a huge tree on my back. See? And that's exactly it. And I, I think trees represent... I don't know. For some reason, I think they even represent wisdom because they've been around for so long and they just have, you know, they're cool. D Shepard says, I did cut my hair after my piercing didn't shave it, though. Just wanted to do a more rocker look. Yeah. And it's your form and your whatever you see in here. That's what needs to come out. And I guarantee your short little hair and your nose ring, you are rocking it. Okay. Julie says, okay, thank you so much, guys. Absolutely. <sighs> it when things happen organically so yesterday I went and I got my tulip says I was in my 20s I actually let my boyfriend at the time talk me out of getting a haircut that I knew would be cute on me as soon as we broke up I got the haircut and my first tattoo see we have to figure okay before I go on on anything else we have to figure what is holding us back from our self expression what is holding us back from being authentically ourselves is it opinions is it society is it ourselves and the only way that you're going to figure out this riddle because trust me it's a riddle and the thing is it's constantly changing so you this is a work in motion this is not a okay, well, I'm going to write a list and then my job is done for the rest of my life. No, 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 no. You, this is a constant as life evolves, you need to evolve with it kind of thing. So you need to sit down, take a quiet moment, make yourself a cup of tea, find your comfort zone and write down these things. You're like, what do I want to look like? And and it's not so much like I want to look like, you know, um, Heidi Klum that we don't want to look like anybody else from ourselves, but it's what, what do you see in here? Write it down. Then whatever you have written down, whatever form or for whatever form you have written down that you want to be, take the easiest ones first and put them at the top of the list to the more difficult ones. Start at the top work your way down. And every time you check something off that list, it's going to give you a sense of accomplishment. And before you know it, you are just going to be like, here I am. Here's the true authentic me. I'm out. I'm out and I'm having fun. It works. All right. Um, anchors are huge. The heart muscle weapons, anything really. Absolutely. Kathy says, I have a bird and a Pegasus tattoo. (gasps) Very cool. Julie, music lyrics, I'm sorry, I have so many ideas. You know what, that's a really good idea. I like the whole idea of the music because it can be a personal song for you and it might mean something to somebody else, but so long as it has that meaning to you, I love it. In fact, I do have words to the song, You Are My Sunshine, written on my arm because my mom used to sing that to me and my sister and all the grandkids. So when she passed away, Brandon took the first part of the lyric and has it tattooed on his arm. And I have the last part tattooed on my arm. And it says, you'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. And just looking at my arm, you have no idea what that says, but it keeps my mother near me. All right. Um, Let's see here. Kelly says, how long can I, oh, not too sure how long I can stay thunderstorm rolling in a tornado warning. Well, Kelly, I'm going to tell you right now to go and, um, be safe. I mean, don't leave right now, but 
tornadoes scare the boop out of me. And so please be safe. Um, Tulip says, I have a Bob D Dylan lyric. He was a great songwriter. Linda says, Julie Gar Garland once says, be yourself, everyone else is taken. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So yesterday I went to, um, I went to film. I did, I went filming and I filmed at a resale shop here in town. And I want to show you what I got because it's amazing. And... I got it. I filmed for like an hour for a 30 second video and I am so glad I did because uh, I was still kind of in a funk, but, um, some of my camera angles, I'm like, what was I looking at? So I got it all worked out though. Um, we had tornado warnings last night. Be safe. Yeah. I saw a tornado touch down at the O'Hare airport in Chicago and everybody had to go to the downstairs terminal crazy. So I went to the resale shop and I did my, um, my video, but look what I found. Okay. Get ready. Everybody. You ready? You ready? I found a vintage free people top. Yes. Look at this tag. I mean, how long has it been since you've seen this tag? And it was $22. And yes, I paid $22 for this top, but it is so cute and it is so vintage. And I just love everything about it. Am I going to try it on? You know I am. So look at this. Um, thanks, Julie. Probably won't get a tornado, but I uh, can hear the thunder rolling in. <gasps> Scary. So I... Now, I am all about... Sometimes I wear my clothes too baggy. This is vintage. So it vintage clothes typically run smaller. I didn't care. I wanted this top. So this is so cute. Oh uh, yeah. Very vintage. Yes. Is this not, I just love the pattern. And the, here's the thing. Oh, so Lori, hi. Lori says, I began a journey to good health 13 years ago and lost 155 pounds. Congratulations. That's awesome. Over a two year period. I have maintained my weight loss for 11 years. After losing the weight, I cut my hair short and spiky and added a lot of tats. See, it's all about regaining your, you just feel like you, I don't know. It's really weird how our mind puts us into boxes and we think that we don't get a, we don't get to get out. And that's not true. And I love the simple fact, Lori, that you're like, this is my, this is my version of me and you're living that version. And I think it is exciting. They really do tend to run smaller. Oh, I know. So here's my question. Were people smaller decades ago? Or are we bigger or did they just make clothes smaller? It's a question. Um, I used to not want to be noticed because I usually, I was, usually for negative reasons. Now I'm noticed for hair and tats and I love it. You know what? That is so cool. And I love how you're like, yeah, here I'm comfortable with who I am and you're not trying to be invisible anymore. I think that that's amazing. And congratulations again. So Tulip, they really were smaller. I mean, that's weird that we are like, um, it's weird that we're a bigger version of us, but I think, you know, it, truthfully, I think it fits really cute. It's just my aversion to like any tightness in my shoulder. So I'm going to get over it because they're too, it's too cute. So once again, and I can, I can button it if I wanted to. It's a little tight around the girls, but you know what? Every once in a while, it's, it's okay. I remind myself of my mom. Um, I want to be like Lori. Absolutely. See? I thought that this was really cute. And I, uh, I saw it and I'm like, you know what? These, the, the shop was really nice to let me film there. And I, I, I was going to leave with something and I really like it. Lori said, love that top. What a great find. I know. I just was like, as soon as I saw that tag, I was like, I don't care if it fits or not. This little puppy's coming home with me. And I'm just really glad that it fit. And then 
Another thing I found was another free people item. These were $22, so I spent a little bit more than I really do like. Um, and um, But that's okay, because look what I found. I got these really cute free people pants. And let me stand up and show you these. I have to wash them, but I think they're super cute. Mm -hmm. See, aren't those cute? They're like a... They're like a brown check, kind of like a gingham, I think it is. And they are, of course, a little bit long, but I just cuffed up the bottom. And they have a little bit of a harem pant, meaning that they have like a drop, kind of a drop crotch kind of thing. But they have the elastic in the back. $22. And how I was figuring I would wear these is, let's follow along. So... In the summertime, I'll just wear them with like my little um, either Birkenstocks or uh, my Mystic Mary Janes. But in the winter or the fall, I thought with like a really cool chunky cable net sweater and a pair of Doc Martens, I thought these would be super cute. So that's what I bought. So, okay, so it's like a cute old vintage bowling shirt. Yeah, it really is. Um, Tulip says, the hormones added to food has made people grow taller and younger girls start their periods earlier. Yeah, no, and that's one of the reasons why I rarely drink real milk. And I know I eat cheese, but it, uh, yeah, it, it, it's 100% true. And here's the thing. It's, it's like, I don't get why people are just like, they don't put two and two together. It's like, if you put chemicals into the food you eat it's going to go into you it's it, it's just the way it is you know it's like if you pollute the ocean and the fish fish eat the stuff in the ocean and you eat the fish it's going into you and i don't get why people don't understand that i just don't i uh, i i just don't understand that courtney says i needs to go thrifting with lonnie yes you do sweetheart you really do um, me too, Courtney. I'd love to thrift with you and Lonnie. You know, here's the thing. It's, it's like, I actually, um, I, I was, some company reached out to me about doing like some travel thing. And while I think it would be super fun to go on vacation on all of you, I know one day we're going to have to do a meetup to where we like go and have lunch and eat crazy desserts and then go thrifting. And I think that that would be so much fun. Just to be like, hey, you know what? Let's just all meet in, I don't know, L.A. And we can go to thrifting in Beverly Hills and, and just do something fun and crazy like that. So with the all of the plans that I have, we are going to do this one day. Because I'm not going to sit there and be like, you know, wishes can't come true and we can't manifest things that we want because we can, because we are strong, independent women and we can do whatever we want. So originally what I had decided to do, and we are going to do that right now. Um, let's see here. Tulip says, my mom was a hippie and a musician and we were vegetarian my whole childhood. We were poor and we ate whatever my mom could scrape up. And I remember, um, gosh, like on a good night, we would eat tamales out of a can. And those were the best canned tamales I'd ever eaten. And I remember one time I was in my 20s or 30s and I found a can. And I'm like, oh, I remember these from a kid. They're so good. And this was before I was a vegetarian. So I opened it up and I ate it. And I'm like, whoa, what is this? What is this? This is not the same. And it just, it was kind of for me, it was like, um, Oh, Tina's here. Hi, Lonnie. So happy to be here. Just got here. <gasps> Welcome, Tina. Oh, if only come on winning lottery ticket. Kelly's, yeah, you know what? Um, let's see. Courtney says, it would be, I need a Lonnie day to heal my soul. She's about 20 minutes north from me. Yes. And yes, we do. And Linda says, let me know in advance as I have to fly from Scotland. You know what? We will plan it way in advance so everybody can take some time off. Um, Let's see, Tulip says, we were poor as well, and my mom was a single parent. You know, my, I had both parents, but man, we just did not have any money. And, and I can remember my mom one time, um, we just, if their food was bought, we ate it. And one time my mom bought this big old 
bar of Tillamook cheese because that's for the week. And we had a dog and Shav- her name was Shavasco, which is actually means, um, I don't, it means like hurricane or something. But Shavasco jumped up and grabbed the cheese. And it was a Sunday afternoon. And I remember my mom freaked out because we didn't have enough money to buy any more cheese. So she got like some superhuman strength and she goes flying over the table, chases the dog down, gets the cheese out of the dog's mouth, wipes it off, cuts off the little fang marks, and we ate that block of cheese because there was no way that my mom was throwing that away. Um, Let's see here. Linda says, let me, uh, so you have to fly. Tulip says, so, okay. Kelly says, oh, Courtney, that you're a lucky lady. Um, I would love to make the trip from the UK to LA thrift with Lonnie. Okay, we're just going to have to make it happen because you know what? Um, Tina says she would come from New York. Yes. So that's just the whole thing It's we're going to make it happen because I'm not going to sit here and just be like, I'm just going to think about dreams. I'm just going to make things come to fruition. So we will, um, <laughs> Kara says, just got here. We ate government surplus foods for years. Yeah, Kara, this happened when we were living on Dora Drive. And I know that you guys were living just a couple of streets away. And I just remember my mom having a freak out over that cheese. Um, let's see here. We'll be here for a while. At, um, I'll test Lonnie out and make sure that she's not poisoned mm-hmm. first. Yeah. You know what? T- Courtney and I'll do a little, um, test run just to make sure that I, I, when I get there, I'm actually me and not like some 300 pound guy pretending to be me. Um, Kelly says, okay, storm's got scary internet flickering with power. Love y'all. Okay, Kelly. If you can check in later, let us, um, just leave a comment. Let us know that you're all, that you're safe. All right. Your safety is more important. Um, Tulip says being vegetarian was cheap back then. Veggies cost less than meat. You know what? For some reason, my mother, um, I remember we had to, we ate, we ate things out of a can a lot and a lot of hot dogs. So we are going, um, Linda says, I didn't know we were poor until somebody told me, you know, (sighs) I, we knew we were poor. We got told we were poor. Um, we got told we were poor every single day. It was like, you better eat that. We're poor. We were, I knew we were poor when my Christmas present was my mom took like a pillowcase and made baby blankets and baby diapers for my doll for Christmas. And that was my present. And I got an Etch-a-Sketch and that was it. Um, the weather is crazy lately. I've been watching, like, I, I get all my weather report and all my news on, um, off of TikTok, and some of the things I've seen are absolutely scary. So, you know what, I was going to show the fall fashion for free people, but you know what, we only have like 10, 15 minutes left. Do you all want to see that, or do you want to save that for tomorrow? Um, uh, do, do, do. Linda, I have to admit, I laughed, that's cute, yeah, no, And then also too, I mean, when I was younger, when I would outgrow my clothes, my mom would alter them so that I could still wear them. And, but back then it was kind of like the hippies kind of bell bottoms. So she would just find some fabric and um, sew it onto the bottom. And then that's, um, that's how we do it. Dealer's choice. Mm, Let's go ahead and take a look at some fashion because tomorrow we're doing our trivia game and I don't want to. Um, I don't want to have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and we are going to take a look at some free people fall fashion. Okay, there we go. Um, this is the biggest live yet. Good conversation. Yes. I mean, it's been a great live. I, 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 for as much as I was like, um, feeling icky yesterday, today's been amazing. You all are beautiful, wonderful souls. Okay, we are looking at fall fashion from free people. And I'm going to tell you right now, just sitting here and looking at what I'm seeing so far, I'm going to say denim. Denim's going to be big. And also, too, um, a little bit of oversized kind of um, casual kind of look. Tulip says, yes, I'm having fun. See, this is what it's supposed to be like. This is the energy level that I absolutely love because then I get to spend the rest of my day just like, it's been amazing. 
So, okay, thank you all for participating. So fun. Absolutely. So look at the, these jeans right here. So let's take a closer look. We're going to take a closer look as I move my microphone so I can see. Look, microphone moves. I'm all trying to look around the microphone. Free people, yay, my fave brand. Oh, how's little indie girl today? She's fine. She's just sitting right there. And we actually, it's been so hot. I did turn on my... Um, I turned on my air conditioner. I finally did. And it's been to the point where I take her for a walk at 530 in the morning. So we go for our walk and then um, at like at five o'clock, I'll take her outside, let her play in the pool. And then um, about eight o'clock, I might take her for a walk. I'm not really too sure. Um, <laughs> Kathy says, Lonnie is the sister I never had. Oh, thank you. I take that as a crazy compliment thank you so much tina says i ordered stuff through amazon last night on your site i hope it's going through for you <gasps> thank you thank you tina so much i appreciate that very much okay so the first thing we're going to take a look at is this cute little jacket now this is a vegan moto jacket for 198 dollars i think this thing is stinking cute Look at that. Look at and how it moves. And I love how it moves. I, it, it's vegan. Ooh, and look at, look at when she flips around. Look at that lining on that. That's pretty cool. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see if we can see that lining any better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nope. For some reason, you just get little glimpses of it, but gosh, that's cute. So yeah, I would put that, um, I will say yes to the, yes, you know how they have like the yes to the dress? I'm gonna say yes to the jacket because that was a stinking cute jacket. Now, these shoes right here, these shoes um, are $315. You, you take that jacket and you can recreate an outfit in so many different ways. And personally, I think you can find sneakers that are less than $300. But I will say no to the sneakers, yes to the jacket. Um, I also noticed you say stinking cute. I do too. My mom used to say that so stinking rotten adorable. I always say stinking cute. I don't know where I got that from. And Linda, yes, the jacket is amazing. And, you know, you could wear it with a cute little white skirt like that. But I'm thinking you could wear... Um, like a pair of can you could just wear anything so we are going to have to um donate some blood and i don't know i was going to say and try to get some money for that jacket because that is pretty darn cool all right so looking on again we have they have this cute little belt and you know what truthfully you can go to a thrift store you can find a cute little um leather belt or any belt but that definitely helps with the outfit and then the here again is your 315 dollars sneakers which i think you could wear any sneakers with that one and then they have this cute little um corset top okay here's the thing how do you say corset i say corset that's that's to me that's how it is but i hear all these influencers and they're like corset and i'm like it's not a corset it's a corset and they're like, this corset. And I'm like, it's a corset. So I know, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. I don't, it, it's just weird when I'm like, I've been, you know, either I have been mispronouncing this, which is not that, that far-fetched, or um, they're saying it wrong. Now, here's another cute outfit. And so let's take this down. We have the two-tone baseball hat, which is very cute. Oh, Courtney says, I do have one question. Okay. Um, I have, I say it the way you do. Good. Courtney, what's your question? I also noticed, okay, jacket is low. Courtney, I'm waiting for your question. And then um, we have this cute little hat. And then this little white top, very cute. The only thing I don't really care for at this top is that um, I like how I say it like you. Yeah. You know what? I think these influencers are trying to be all fancy. I think they're trying to sound more like, Oh, look at me, I'm all fancy. I say corset. And I'm like, you know what? Get over yourself. It's a corset, not a corset. So 
Well, anyway, what I was going to say is the neckline on this top, while I think it's super cute, um, did you ever grab a pair of DM sandals? No, I did not. I didn't. I did not. I did not get them because I have been wearing my Birkenstocks. That's why. I've been wearing my Birkenstocks a lot. And also, too, I mean, they're about $120. And here's my reasoning. For more, I can buy that jacket. And I would rather have that jacket and just wear my Birkenstocks. So I have been wearing sandals, though. That's where I am going to take the... Um, I'm going to take the, the victory. I'm going to take the win. It's the simple fact that I got over the fact that one toe is longer than the other. And I got, don't you give me that. You know what? I am a thrifty person right now. And it's really hard for me to just, every time I go out, spend hundreds of dollars. So when I buy something, I really put a lot of effort and a lot of thought into it. And so long as my toes are showing, that's the victory. And so I, I have budgeted like things I can wear. For example, I spent 40 bucks yesterday on those two items. And I had, or I told myself I was only going to spend like 15. So I went over my budget. So, um, you are the jacket queen. Yes. I got that from my mother. I live in Southern California where it's never cold and I am the jacket queen. So getting back to a jacket. So this outfit right here, this top would drive me crazy. It would be too high up while it's super cute. Then they have these pull-on jeans, but I'm a little curious about these jeans. Okay, that's what I thought because they are, let's take a closer look at these because you see how they have them tucked into a sock. While that's very cool and trendy, I would not be comfortable wearing that at all. And then look at how they look on her. How in the heck are they getting that tucked into the socks? Because if I did that, I would have the biggest cankles in the world. You know, no, you were right. You were right. I know it. But I would, if I tried to do that look, my ankles would be that big. So let's realistically look at these pants they look like um old school yes they do um realistically okay so these pants um they look like they're a pull-on they have the elastic on the sides and then they have it tapered at the bottom being the size that i am and they look really big I would have to say chances are they would not fit look very good on me. But I think if you were taller, they would be cute. And here's the thing is they're $98. And for free people, you know what? Truthfully, that's not, that's not horrendous. Um, some of their pants are way more expensive. So they're not too, too bad. Now, another outfit. Oh, so get this. Okay, here. Look at this, look at this belt, because I'm going to tell you something on this belt. I showed my outfit. Do you all have the visual on this belt? Because you can feel a rant coming. See this belt? See this belt right here? Right there? Okay. I showed my outfit of when I, um, my cute little free people top and the shorts. Remember that? I put it in my video for the week of what I wore, and then I did a short yesterday. Got it? Got it? I showed my belt that looked just like that, correct? I said I got it a couple of years ago at Urban's Outfitters, Urban Outfitters, right? Yes, yes, you're right. I had somebody on my video tell me I had that belt a couple of years ago. It's out of style, I got rid of mine. Well, I'm telling you right now, it is not out of style. It's right there in Free People. And even if it was out of style, who cares? It's cute, and I will continue to wear it. So here's the thing that kills me. It's women being mean to women. It is, we're supposed to support each other. We're supposed to be there for one another. We're supposed to say, you know what? If you like it, wear it. I am there for you. And it just kills me when there are people out there that are so 
negative that they have to find anything and just interject their little venom. So there you go. There's the belt. It's not out of style. Even if it was, I still going to wear it because you know why? Because I know what I look like. I know what my version is. And if my version wants to wear that belt, so help me, I'm wearing the damn belt. There you go. Ha. Huh. So um, I love that belt you showed. I know it is cute. Unless you are too short, I never find trousers that are long enough. I'm tall. Polly, I have the exact opposite. Ha ha, that was the outtake video. So many. So it, it was from that. What's wrong with people? I have no idea. Truthfully, I have no idea. But here's the thing. It's I'll leave a comment. I'll just, here's the thing is sometimes I have to comment to these comments to get them off of my page so I don't see them every time they pop up. So I'm just like, wear whatever you want. You know what? If you don't like the belt, don't wear the belt. I don't care. So there you go. And if you watch this video, that was for you. I totally agree. I always shop what I like and I don't care what's in style. I'm not a trend chaser. You know, I can tell you what's in and I can tell you what's out as far as fashion goes, but that has nothing, 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 nothing to do with what I'm actually wearing because I'm only going to wear what I want. Can you tell I'm on a roll today? This right here, this is the energy I like on our lives. Um, if you like it, it's your style. Absolutely. Tina says, I have many things out of style and I don't care. I wear what I like, it's style or not. And that's just what kills me. It's like, we have to say it's out of style. It's not out of style if we like it. Our style is us. So are we out of style? No, I'm just gonna say clothes are clothes. We wear clothes, clothes don't wear us. There you go. Uh, me too, I, I like to look different, absolutely. Tina says women should stand together and give each other support no matter what. Here's the thing, she doesn't have to support me. She doesn't have to say diddly anything. Just don't say something negative. I am not out here just seeking like approval. Like, what do you think? What do you think? I'm here to support you. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to uplift, uplift you and tell you you are perfect just the way you are. So just don't say anything if you're not that way. Just don't say anything if you don't agree. That's all I ask. Just don't say anything. Ugh. Oh, Connie's here. Hello, Connie. Just checking in for a few minutes. Have to run for some errors. Everybody say hello to Connie. She is 100%. I love how you have just your true authentic style. Kara, Kelly's um, been there, done that with those storms. Oh, yep. No, she's already gone. She's already, um, I think she's already in the basement. Exactly. Say nothing. It's easy. Saying nothing is easier. But you know what? I think people get so wrapped up in their own misery that they're just like that needs to be said well no it doesn't no it doesn't I will never ever ever I will never tell you you look bad and I will never tell you what you're wearing is not good because you know what if you like it it's perfect now if you come to me and you're like what do you think of this Lonnie do you think that this goes together I will give you my honest opinion I'll be like looks great or I'll be like try a French tuck, you know, maybe add that sweater. That's a difference. That's different from me being like, you know what, that's out of style. You'll look like um, something that fell out of the back end of a cow. You know, it, 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 there's, it's completely different. Um, let's see here. If you're not going to say something nice, don't say anything at all. Exactly. If you, it, it, but then again, you know what? To me, it's like the negativity is just like my addiction used to have control over me. It's almost like negativity has control over them. They can't help themselves. It's like negativity is all like, yeah, you know what? This is really fun. So say this. And then they're all like, oh, yeah, no, this is really fun because that's what negativity said. So to me, it's like you, you got to take control of that. You just have to take control out of that negativity and stop doing that. So, wow. Who would have thought that that belt would have triggered me on that one? But you know, you just never know what rants and raves I'm going to be having on a, on a daily life. You just never know. Um, love negativity is their, it, it's like, yeah, it is like negativity is their, their choice. And it's, uh, it, it, it's amazing 
But it, I think that it's so ingrained in them and it's been like such a part of their life for so long that they don't even realize what they're doing. They don't realize that their words are, are a little hurtful. And it, it's oh, April. It, and it's just, I don't get it. And to me, it's, it's here's the thing. Is it doesn't stop me. It doesn't hurt my feeling. But gosh, I just feel bad for that person. You know what? I would... I would, I, I would hate to live like that. I would hate to be just like, I am just going to say something negative every chance I can get. So th that is, it's their own insecurities. So Tulip says, I think they do realize you. So you see that just goes out of my realm of thinking. So to me, it seems like if, if I were being really negative and I knew it, I, 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 I would try to change that, but I, I guess it just each to their own. And maybe some people are like, this is awesome. I don't know. I don't get it. Kelly says, I'm back. Seems to have blown over. My gazebo is in the cedars though. Laugh out loud. No um, hydro, but have a charge in the internet on my phone. Oh, well, thank goodness you're okay. And I'm sorry you lost your gazebo. Um, Linda says there is a word in German for people who revel in their own misery. Really? Um, Connie says, I've learned many years ago that what people think of me is not my business. I have to remind myself often. See, and that's just the thing. And sometimes I think that's what upsets me is we shouldn't have to have this, this constant reminder that other people's opinions don't matter because other people need to keep their opinions to themselves. And so... <sighs> we're never, ever, ever going to change the way people think. And we're never going to make the world the most harmonious place in existence. But we can change how we think about it. And we can change our own thoughts. So if you get anything out of this episode, it's realizing that we can sit there and we can be like, yeah, that person's horrible for saying those things. But what about when we're saying those things to ourselves, all right? It's really easy for us to sit there and be like, don't you say that to me. You, you're not allowed to say that to me. You keep your opinion of that belt to yourself. That's ridiculous. But when those same words are coming from inside my head, that's when it becomes tricky. And that's when it's like, oh, wow, you know, where'd that come from? Maybe it's true. You know, maybe the belt is old fashioned that is what we need to change. That's what we can control and that's what we need to work on. So if you are struggling with your inner self voice or any sort of negativity, we need to think about that person who didn't like that belt and we need to push back on that voice just as much as we did in our own minds as we did this morning. So give yourself that self-love and stop saying mean things to yourself. And Connie says, we can change only ourselves. Yes, we can't change others. I agree. Um, Tulip says, I try, I try to be the change I wish to see in the world. That is a very, I mean, that is a very noble thought and I absolutely love it, but just make sure that Everything you do is for yourself. I, I absolutely love it. Aw, thank you, Connie. I appreciate my little my little super supporter. I appreciate you. Um, Kelly says, true, we we are harsh on ourselves, then the self-doubts take over. Absolutely. Because here's the thing is we're the only people that can hear it. I can sit here and I can tell you about a comment, and then it's really easy for us as a group to be like, that's not right. But once, but when it's only in our heads and we're the only people fighting ourselves, we get even more self-doubt. So if you're ever out there, um, so uh, Courtney says, once again, this community has left me re revved up and hyped. Be bright, be bold, be brave. Absolutely. But here's my, my offer to you. And here's really what I mean by the, in the, the depths of my little heart. If you're struggling 
with um, any sort of self-doubt. If you have something that keeps on replaying in your mind and you need support and you need to be uplifted and you need to be told that you are perfect in every single way, then this is where you need to do it. This is where, this is a community where you can be like, you know what, I need backup. You know, I need somebody to help me with these negative inner voices. And we are, I'm here for you. We're here for you. So don't struggle with those inner voices yourself because we're never going to look at you and we're never going to be like, Psh, that's ridiculous. And we're never going to be like, well, that's the truth. We're going to love you and we're going to support you and we're going to help you get past those inner voices. That is what we are here for. Um, <laughs> let's see here. You rock, Courtney. Yes, she does. Tulip says, I sometimes... I am sometimes too harsh on myself, but I do see it and work on it. And it's like chipping away every single day. Um, we are ducking warriors. Yes, and I am working on that t-shirt. I am working on the ducking warriors. I'm working on a gray hair and tattoos t-shirt. And I am working on a t-shirt that says the word beige with a red circle and a line through it. And it says fierce over 50. I am, those are the three t-shirt designs that I am working on. We are ducking warriors. Connie says, I had a guy leave comments that um, were, ooh, sexual. I reported and blocked. How do you deal with that, Lonnie? You know what? It's the same thing I deal with any negativity. You know, here's the thing. It's like people are gross. I get some, some messages that are like, you are a sick, twisted individual, but I won't give them any more of my energy than I give somebody telling me that I'm too old to wear tattoos. It's the same tactic. It's the same attack, but with a different weapon. So look at it for exactly what it is. You know what? It, it's, these, are, these are people who need help. Oh, Tina, thank you so much. I appreciate that. You are amazing. But it is the same attack, just a different weapon. And Connie, I am sorry that you have to experience that, but you're stronger than that. And you are way better person than that. So instantly block, instantly report, tell yourself you didn't deserve that sort of treatment and move on because you can't let that energy stick with you because he wins. If that energy sticks with you, if that comment sticks with you, if it upsets you, then he ultimately wins. And this is not a forum where people like that win. Well, oh my goodness, Courtney, you guys are like showering today. And I just like, maybe I can't get there of Doc Martin sandals. You guys are amazing. Oh, it says, um, Tina says, I just saw I can send something so happy. Oh, you guys are so sweet. I appreciate you so immensely. But just realize that, Connie, you are, you, are, you are the warrior. You are the one in control. You are the ducking warrior. He is just a sick little worm on the side of a road. Just step on him and keep on going. And it, 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 here's the thing. It's like, I'm very fortunate that I don't get very many of those because I, I don't know, maybe uh, it, it, here's a true story. When I first started TikTok, I got, um, oh, can other commenters help by reporting also? See, I think what happens is once they're blocked, the comment's gone. So the only way that we could help in that is if we got the username and then um, we could report it, but it, it gets a little difficult. But once it's blocked, it's gone. Um, let's see here. Courtney says, best life ever. They kept getting better and better. You should be paid for leading a powerful group of women. You know, I, it, it is, it is um, it's my pleasure. It is my honor. It is absolutely beautiful and that is why yesterday i just um that is why i was just so bummed because it's like when i do this i like to walk away it just kind of being like 
we are ducking warriors. And today was a just true testament of this amazing group. And I know, I mean, truthfully, I know over time this is going to grow and it's going to grow. And we're going to have a great, com even a larger, greater community. But this is something that's going to grow. So, Connie, so long as you're okay, that's all that matters. But just, again, like I said, don't let people like that get to you. And here's the thing. And this is what I always I always think of this because, you know, I've always been the fighter. It's just the way it is. And sometimes when I get little comments, Stacy, I talked about you earlier. So I absolutely love you. And I'm telling you right now, your legs are perfect. Okay. I was like, no, no negative self-talk. You're not allowed to say you have bird legs because Every single part of you, every piece of you is perfect, including your legs. There you go. All right. Um, if you have to come to the live late, I encourage you to go back and watch it um, in its entirety. Thank you, Courtney. I appreciate you. Um, Kelly says, my cardiologist laughed when I said I got to go. My Lani is live at noon, still had to watch in the car till I got home. You know what? You tell your cardiologist this. I appreciate you. But this is important because we need each other and we have to support each other. But really quick, and then I got to run because I have to go out in the park and take my horrible pictures. No, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to go in the park and I'm going to take great pictures because we only say positive things about ourselves. See, that was my negative self-talk. That was me trying to be mean to myself because I was going to go into this telling myself, that I took, um, that I take bad pictures and I can't do that. So yes, Stacey, it really upset me. I want, cause I, I appreciate you so much and I love you dearly. And I just want you to, to love your, you know, whatever form or version of fashion of us that we are, I want you to love it. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, no, they got a lecture over that. So here's the way I look at it is I see these people online who sometimes say something to me and I know in the bottom of my heart that they would not have remotely the courage to say it to my face. And that's what makes me sleep well at night is because I don't give them a time of day because I know that they just, they wouldn't even remotely think about saying these things to my face. And so that just kind of gives me a little bit of a, like, it, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I am a, it makes me feel like a warrior. There you go. A ducking warrior. Um, <laughs> Kelly says, yes, my online support ducking warriors. Yes, you can tell, it will be like, you know what? My ducking support group is on. We're, we are going to have so much fun with that. We are going to just, we are going to just do a, things um okay so i do have to go just before um because it's going to get hot it's going to get hot and i have my duck martins on again and i want to get the certain lighting so we're going to be back tomorrow tomorrow is going to be a super fun day also um watch your inner self talk lenny your your podcasters can hear i know because i talk to myself all the time you know, it, 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 it's, it, but I caught myself and here's the thing. It's, it's like, I caught myself because I listen to everything I tell all of you. Bye Connie. So, um, tomorrow we are going to, we have so much more free people fashion to look at, but we're going to do it with a twist. We're going to play trivial pursuit. We're going to do our trivia questions. So y'all better come with your little thinking caps on. Cause we're going to do some trivia and we are going to look at some more free people fashion because that was, I think both of them are fun. And then we're just going to have coffee and we're just going to do fun things. All right, everybody, I'm off and I appreciate each and every single one of you. I love you dearly. Be bright, be bold, be brave, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye, everyone.